as it was already mentioned in my Senecon product family review, these instruments are identical in their functions and differ mostly in their form factor and appearance. Both of them has two switchable software versions, UT making them ultrasonic flood detectors and thickness gauge plus, transforming them into A-scan thickness gauges with advanced corrosion mapping capabilities. In this video, I'll concentrate on interface basic concepts and will demonstrate them using UT software version on Sonicon B instrument. To turn it on, I press the power button and hold it until audible signal sounds. The second function LED also lights up in white during the instrument launching. Let's now review the main screen of the instrument. In the left part of the screen, we can see the current menu column. The bottom line of the screen is the menu titles line. Moving the cursor through this line changes the content of the current menu column. In the center there is an A-scan area. Just above it you can see the indicators panel. Indicators show us which modes are active now in the moment when the mode is switched on or off. Corresponding indicator is blinking green, thus drawing operator's attention to this fact. The rightmost indicator is a battery indicator. Please always control the battery state and recharge it when necessary. The upper line above the indicators panel is the information panel. It consists of two symmetrical parts. The left part is for most important settings display, the right one for measured indication parameters. A large value in the left part is current gain value. Others for setting parameters are chosen probe frequency in MHz, current acoustic wave propagation velocity, also known as sound velocity, in meters per second or inches per microsecond chosen probe angle and probe zero value. In the right part, four small and one large measurements are shown. Operator can choose which parameters to display here. Now let's see how to navigate the menu and set up its parameters. Using left and right arrows, we can navigate the horizontal, that is title menu, choosing appropriate vertical menu. As far as the main menu in its full mode, it has two pages. One can switch between them using button sequence, second function, then left arrow, or second function, then right arrow. Please review my video about the types of menus for more information on this topic. There are two ways to switch between navigating horizontal and vertical menus. First of all, we can press down or up arrow moving cursor from the title to the first or last item of the vertical menu, respectively, pushing up arrow when on the upper point or down arrow when on the last point of the vertical menu, will return focus to the horizontal menu. Second way is to use Enter and Exit buttons. Pressing Enter puts cursor to its last position in the current vertical menu, and pressing the Exit button when in vertical menu, will bring you back to horizontal. As we have already seen, up and down arrows move cursor through the vertical menu. Now let's see how to change menu items value, depending on their type. There are two ways to set a value of the numeric parameter after choosing it. If you know or guess which value you want to set and would like to quickly come close to it, you can press Enter and operating F1 to F5 buttons, quickly choose the closest value to the desired one. If you want to approach the necessary value in steps watching how this affects the instrument, you can choose a desired step with step button and then adjust the value with left and right arrows. If parameter has a discrete set of values, they can be chosen using left and right arrows.
enter key has no effect in this case. If parameter is a switch, you can operate it using left and right arrows. Enter key has no effect in this case. As in any other instrument, all fullness of functions and parameters are available in its menu, but we believe that in everyday use, frequent menu browsing is not comfortable. That's why we've placed all most used functions to the instrument keyboard. Let's now review the list of functions bound to the keyboard buttons. I will now only list them, giving short description. Gain minus and gain plus buttons, change current gain with the preset step. Second function plus gain plus switches the gain change step values. Second function plus gain minus switches on and off the reference gain mode. If this mode current claims to be zero and further gain changes, show the sign difference from that reference gain. Exiting this mode, instrument asks if we would like to keep the gain changes or return back the reference. Here and in all similar cases, enter button means yes and exit button means no. Plus decibel button adds to the current gain and removes back some preset number of decibels, 6 by default. It is frequently used for switching between sensitivity levels, search and acceptance, for example. Second function plus plus decibel activates the auto xx% percent function. It automatically operates the instrument gain in a way to put the maximum signal in the gate to the reference level, 80 or 50% as was previously set in measure menu. A scan button brings us to the A scan direct control mode. The A scan indicator shows us we're in this mode. Now we can move the A scan window left or right with left and right arrows, that is adjusting delay. We can increase or decrease A scan range with gain minus and gain plus buttons. When changing one of the A scan parameters, the step button would cycle its increment decrement step. Down arrow will switch the horizontal axis between distance along the beam, Y coordinate, and time of flight. Up arrow would switch vertical axis between 100 and 110% modes. Enter button would switch A scan between full screen and normal modes. To exit the A scan direct control mode, press exit button. Second function plus A scan and successive presses of the A scan button will cycle the signal rectification mode full wave, positive half wave, negative half wave radio frequency and go back full wave. Press second function or exit button to quit this cycle. Gate 1 button brings us to the first gate direct control mode. The G1 indicator shows us we're in this mode. Now we can move the gate left or right with left and right arrows and up or down with up and down arrows. We can make it longer or shorter with gain minus and gain plus buttons. When changing one of the gate parameters, the step button would cycle its increment decrement step. Enter button would switch the gate on and off. To exit the first gate direct control mode, we can press exit button. Second function plus gate 1 would bring us to the second gate direct control mode. 
which is identical to the previously described mode for the first gate. The quick access menu button brings up and cycles three pages of the quick access menu. At each page there is a cross of five items, which are driven with the corresponding cross of buttons. The first page of this menu is dedicated to the indications measurement and defect detection alarm. The second to the choice of indication parameters to display on the information panel. And the last one to the main interface options, namely measurement units, international or imperial, interface day or night modes, display brightness and choice of the interface languages. Exit button closes the quick access menu. Zoom 1 switches on and off the smart zoom for the first gate. In this mode, in the bottom part of the A-scan area, a full A-scan is displayed and in the upper part, zoomed signal from the first gate. Second function, plus zoom 1, switches on and off similar mode for the second gate. Calibration button brings us to the current probe calibration menu. Please review my corresponding video for more information. Freeze button captures the current signal, stopping further cycling of pulsing receiving. Successive press of this button releases signal. Evaluation button starts the evaluation mode. It helps to automatically find the maximum signal from the indication, put it to the reference level and freeze. This function is really helpful for indications evaluation, especially those difficult to find. Second function plus step switches on and off the peak hold. In this mode an envelope of all signals history is built. The peak curve helping to find the maximum signal over time. Second function plus down arrow resets the peak curve, not switching off the mode. 